Today I'm sharing my unfiltered opinions on new fragrance releases at Sephora. If you're new to this channel, hello, my name is Anya. I love perfumes and I talk about them on here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, along with a ton of bonus content in between. I came up with this idea when I went to into Sephora just actually today, and I was trying out a lot of new fragrances, and I was really taken aback by my expectations versus my perceptions of what the perfumes actually smelled like. So I decided to do a video talking about uh, some new fragrance releases at Sephora, but before that I also had you guys vote on what you wanted to see from me, and I had a few other options, but the majority of you want to see my opinions on new fragrance releases at Sephora. So we're going to be talking about that here today. So if you're definitely, so if you're interested in participating in polls like these in the future, subscribe because I'm always asking for your opinion on what you want to see because I want to create videos that you want to watch. So um, I do want to say disclaimer I have tested some of these perfumes a few times the majority of them I have only tested once I've tried some of them on skin but I'm just going to be giving you my first impressions and my unfiltered thoughts because a lot of these fragrances have been vehemently hated very much loved and I think I have very differing opinions on a ton of these which is why I want to make this video so you can kind of get an alternate point of view um, this is completely unfiltered I'm giving you my honest opinion Opinions, and I'm excited for you to continue watching. I'm gonna kick things off with a fragrance that everyone seems to really really love and I was actually about to blind buy this perfume and I'm so glad I didn't because I got a chance to smell it in store and I don't know how I feel about it. I'm talking about Kaoli's Vanilla Candy Rock Sugar number 42. This is a brand new fragrance. It just launched and I smelled it in Sephora. So I went in twice. I went in in the morning and I sprayed it on myself and I smelled it. And then I went in again that afternoon and tried it out. This is a perfume that's very sweet. It's hyper-realistic gourmand. It has notes of vanilla, pear, marshmallow, rum, violet leaves, and a lang lang at the top. Then it settles to bubblegum, jelly beans, jasmine, caramel, and labnum in the middle. And then in the base, you have sugar, patchouli, vetiver, cashmere, wood, tonka, and sandalwood. To be quite honest with you, when I first smell this perfume I straight away got something that smells like kind of a like cotton candy marshmallow it was very like artificial smelling I think it might have also been the Elang Elang to be honest but then um the thing that I don't like about this fragrance is that to me um I don't know how your experience was when you were a kid but if you were at the dentist and they gave you like that laughing gas as a kid like that anesthesia um when like they're trying to do a filling on you and it was like different flavors i would get the bubble gum and to me this fragrance smells like that bubble gum anesthesia like that bubble gum scented anesthesia at the dentist and i cannot get past that it's horrible like i hate that that is such like a horrible scent memory for me because like that is what makes this fragrance in my book not necessarily something I want to blind buy or I want to own just yet. I might change my mind, of course, but this is a fragrance that to me just reminds me of being at the dentist and I cannot, I cannot deal with it. I... I'm so, I, I feel bad about it because I want to love it. However, this fragrance, like once you get past the dentist thing, this is like my personal experience. Once I got back, once I got past the dentist interpretation, it has like this really pretty kind of like sweet smell. It's not like a very strong fragrance. Um, I feel like it's like a nice like everyday sweet perfume, but it's not something that I think I want to own at this stage. Of course, um, I'm like super close to Sephora. I can go in and I can smell it and I can test it and I might change my mind. But to be honest, me personally, when I heard this fragrance smell like jelly beans, I was like thinking like photorealistic, fruity, sugary jelly beans. And this is like leaning a lot into like the bubblegum, marshmallow, and pear uh, direction. And I can't get any of the jelly bean kind of interpretation that I had in my head. So this is not a fragrance that I personally like because of my scent memory <laughs> associations with bubblegum. But if you're a fan of like bazooka bubblegum, like super sweet, this might be a fragrance for you to try. I definitely recommend it. Everyone seems to really like it and I understand why. But 
everyone has their own interpretations when it comes to scent, and this is just my experience. I'm kind of disappointed, but it's literally just a me thing. It's not the fragrance. It's it's just me. It's just me. I'm the one that can't deal with the smell of bubblegum, apparently. Ella's Brooklyn's Miami Nectar. This is a fragrance I featured in my... Uh, fragrance news video the other week. If you don't know, I do fragrance news, smash or pass, hot or not videos every single Monday in which I talk about the new fragrance releases. If you're interested, definitely check in on Mondays. But uh, this is a new fragrance that launched and they have top notes of coconut water, pineapple, and palm leaf amid of frangipani, wild jasmine, and lily of the valley, and then a base of vanilla, driftwood, amberwood, and moss. When I smell that, I think it's like a really pretty scent. It's a coconut scent that I don't dislike and sometimes like the coconut to me can smell like a little bit too like sunscreen-y or like even play-doh-y sometimes and I actually really do like the scent it settles quite nicely so it opens up like with a little bit of stronger coconut but then it settles into a beautiful like sweet frangipani scent it's really quite beautiful I can see this being a beautiful summery beach scent especially if you love frangipani and coconut if you don't know frangipani is like a very tropical floral kind of uh, note um, and I do like this. Do I love it enough to buy it? No, probably not, but I do really like the scent. The pineapple is not too strong. It's just a little bit in the background. Uh, what really is the star of the show here is that creamy coconut with the vanilla. Okay, so next up we have the fragrances from Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I wasn't able to try the entire line. However, I did try three fragrances and I have opinions on all of them. I will say... <laughs> I was surprised because everyone seems to really dislike these fragrances, but there's one perfume here that I very much fell in love with and I might just end up getting myself either a full-size bottle or a travel spray because I was pretty much transfixed by this perfume, even though everyone seems to really dislike it. So I'm going to talk about, let's see, let's talk about Joyphoria first. So Joyphoria is a white powdery floral fragrance, and I'm not going to go into like what all these fragrances are supposed to mean. I'm literally just talking about the perfumes and the scents themselves. This one was probably like my least favorite one. I smelled it. I was like, this smells nice. It's a white floral scent with coconut. It has top notes of coconut water, neroli, and petted rain, mid of jasmine, elang lang, and tuberose, and then a base of vanilla bean, cashmere wood, powdery nose, and musk. This is a nice scent, nothing to write home about. The fragrances themselves, by the way, I do want to take a step back and talk about the general like, aesthetic in the packaging. The travel sprays were like felt like very cheap. I'll be honest, the travel sprays did feel cheap. Um, I was a kind of like holding them in my hand. They felt like very light, almost like plastic and metallic. It was odd. The fragrance bottles themselves are quite nice. I don't think they're ugly. A lot of people think they're ugly. I think they're supposed to be vintage inspired. I'm okay with that, but I feel like the fragrances themselves are a little bit overpriced. If I'm being completely honest, they're overpriced, and I think that's what a lot of people are saying. However, there is one scent that I'm going to talk about that I love even if it seems overpriced i think i'll be getting it at some point but the next scent i do want to tell you about is love frequency now when i smelled this i really like it i just have a few scents that are similar in my collection which is why i'm not interested in it but this is a scent with pink pepper at the top mid notes of rose and saffron and then a base of musk cashmere wood amber wood and patchouli this is like a very bright almost aromatic rose. It's a warm, spicy fragrance. I already have a few fragrances that resemble that kind of um, scent profile, so this is nothing that I'm going to be getting myself, but I really liked the opening burst of pink pepper. I thought it was a really pretty fragrance. I like the saffron and rose combo. If you like rose, this is one to try. It's a very light and bright perfume. This one is definitely one to check out if you're interested in that scent profile. But like I said, I already have a few fragrances like that in my collection already, so I don't need another one. The one that I was absolutely blown away about, and I can't believe that I like this one because this is... It's so cringe. I, I will say this. It's so cringe. This is called More Sex. This is literally the perfume that has More Sex as its name, and I, like, I think it's my favorite one that I've smelled. It's irritating because I cannot believe I like a perfume that says more sex because 
I might have a perfume in my collection at some point in the future because I'm going to have to buy this perfume because I like it so much that literally says more sex on the bottle. Someone asks me, what are you wearing? I say more sex. They're, they're literally... <laughs> anyway, um, that's just, it's just crazy to me that this is my favorite perfume because it's really, really pretty. I really like it. But like, what am I supposed to do with a fragrance that has this kind of name? It's, it's insane. But let's go into the notes. Uh, so we have top notes of black pepper and juniper berries, a mid of leather, musk, aldron, and ambroxan, and then a base of musk, sandalwood, and amberwood. So I will say this. Most people will probably not like this perfume. And some people might say that it smells like just too, like, I don't know what people would describe this as. I was talking to the sales associate and she just said that she did not like this perfume. I fell in love with it literally on first spritz. It's a polarizing fragrance. Um, if you're familiar with Elizabeth Taylor Passion, if you like Elizabeth Taylor Passion, you will like this one. If you dislike Elizabeth Taylor Passion, you will not like this one. There. That's all you need to know, really. But if we're going into the fragrance itself, this is a really, in my opinion, smooth leather fragrance with like a zesty black pepper. But what I like about this black pepper is that it's not too sharp. I think this fragrance is sexy. And obviously that's what they were going for. But you will have to be someone that likes leather. If you don't like leather, if you don't like ambroxan, if you don't like musks or sandalwood, you are not going to like this perfume. Do not blind buy this perfume. Please, whatever you do, do not blind buy this because you might just hate it. I love it. And I really, I, it's going on my full bottle wish list. I really, really like this perfume. I think it's great. Um, on me, I, I wore it on my skin and... It's a perfume that it settles rather quickly, but it stays on very well. And you, you know when you can tell that a perfume, even if it's like not like a super heavy hitter, that it's going to stay with you and it's going to like be, um, and, and that other people are going to be able to smell you. That's that perfume. It comes and it goes, but it stays. It's it's a it's a strong fragrance, um, but it's not like nuclear. It's not like say Elizabeth Taylor Passion. It's like that, but toned down. And like a more modern twist. I, and less animalic. Because Elizabeth Taylor Passion is like way animalic. This one is not. And I'm not, I'm comparing the two because they both have like a similar interpretation of sandalwood. Um, but they're not the same fragrance whatsoever. But I think it's helpful to know if you like Elizabeth Taylor Passion, you will like this one. If you dislike it, you will dislike this one. I really like it. I'm sorry. I really, really like it. It's going on the full bottle wish list. I think it's really, really pretty. I, I love it. I, I Yeah, I really love it. It's not even pretty. It's not even pretty. It's just impactful. It's impactful and it's grown and it's just va va voom. Like there's something that I just love about it. I'm obsessed. I'm sorry. I'm obsessed. There you go. Um, I told you this video is going to have a lot of unexpected opinions, right? Because like a lot of people really dislike these Charlotte Tilbury, Tilbury fragrances and love the Kaoli. I don't know if I love the Kaoli, but I really like this specific Charlotte Tilbury fragrance. Um, so yeah, anyway, moving on, let's talk about Juliet by Juliet Has a Gun. This was one that I saw in store and I was like, you know what, I don't recognize it, so let me just smell it. Um, so I, I smelled it completely blind. I didn't even know what the notes were. And now looking at the notes, I'm like, huh, I don't, you know. So we have top notes of sour cherry, pink pepper, a mid of jasmine, and then base notes of cashmere and tonka bean. This is a this is a spicy fragrance. Like it opens up and like it's a very peppery fragrance. Pink pepper is not always like straight up peppery like that, but to me it smelled like very peppery. I liked the dry down. I think the dry down is where I got like the jasmine. The cherry to me, maybe I need to smell it again, but I did not get cherry. When I smelled this, I did not get the cherry. I feel like it's more of an accent note. This is primarily a floral perfume. In my opinion, the jasmine here takes center stage. And to my nose, it was more of an indolic jasmine. So I like it. It's not my favorite. I don't love it. I like it a lot better in the dry down because the opening blast was a little bit too peppery for me personally.
Okay, next up, Yves Saint Laurent, Black Opium Over Red. This is a Black Opium Flanker. I don't talk about this that much, but I personally am not a fan of Black Opium. I don't like it. It's just not a fragrance that is up my alley at all. But this is my favorite Black Opium Flanker that I have ever smelled, and I do not say that lightly, okay? This is a fragrance with top notes of cherry and green mandarin, a mid of jasmine, orange blossom, and black tea, and then a base of vanilla, coffee, and patchouli. This smells to me like a chocolate dessert with cherry, but not your typical cherry. It smells like a very photorealistic cherry, like a candy cherry. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It's like really lovely. And again, this is coming from someone that is very picky with cherry perfumes. I feel like a year or two ago, the cherry fragrances that were coming out were just getting redundant. But now what I really like is that we're seeing fragrance brands come out with cherry perfumes, but they're very different and very unique. There is a little bit of variety. This one it is a uh, dessert-like cherry, like chocolate cherry, okay, but with a lightness to it, and I believe that comes from the florals. That comes from the orange blossom specifically, but also the jasmine, but it's like a very, it's a really pretty fragrance, and I can see this being like a fragrance that everyone really likes because it's just a pretty fragrance, and I think, I think it's a good one. I think it's the best black opium that I've smelled, and I come into this not even liking black opium, but I like this one. There's like a hint of coffee, not too much. I always think it's funny that so many people equate coffee with black opium because black opium to me like the focus is not the coffee the focus is the vanilla and sometimes patchouli uh with the black opium fragrances but in this case like there is like a chocolatey cherry with that vanilla and a hint of coffee so i really like this one it's my favorite from the black opium lineup so far all right so next up i have the forever mood fragrances now i have smelled these a few times before and Again, since this is a video talking about like my initial impressions, I'm not I can't give you full reviews on these. So you have to like understand like if someone buys these perfumes and they're trying them um the entire day and they're they are very familiar with the sillage, they will probably be able to get you give you like a better interpretation of what these fragrances smell like. But I'm giving you my unbiased initial opinion on these perfumes. I have tried them like once or twice. I mean, yeah, no, twice. I've tried them twice. I've worn a few of them on skin. And I'm going to tell you which ones I'm, like, okay with and which ones I really love. So first up, let's talk about You Remind Me. This one has notes of apricot skin, orange blossom, and sensual musks. It's a light and bright fragrance. I would say it's, like, the brightest perfume out of all of them. Um, I, I like it. I don't love it. Um, I feel like this would be, like, the kind of, like, just out of the shower scent. And it's nice. It's not my favorite. I do you think this is a lighter orange blossom? So if you want an orange blossom that's not too heavy, this is one to try. But again, it's not my favorite. I like it, but it's not the standout for me personally. Okay, let's talk about NDA. Now, NDA is, I would say, one of like one of the ones that I really, really like. This is a fragrance with spiced rum, tonka bean, and tobacco flower. What I like about this is that it's a floral with a bit of booziness, but it's not overtly boozy. Uh, when I first smelled it, I like, categorized it as like a warm floral fragrance. It's really, really pretty. It's a little bit darker, and I think... Personally, that's why I like that one a lot more than you remind me. Next up, we have a fragrance, I Am Her. This is one of the more popular ones, and I admit I've tried this fragrance only once. Um, I went in again today, and they didn't have the testers. I wasn't able to formulate my final thoughts on it. It is a red velvet pear and oud scent, but from my recollection, it's still that light and bright, so you might think, think oh yeah, it's oud, it's going to be heavy. No, it's not. It's a really pretty scent, and I can see why it's, I think, the most loved perfume. I really liked it a lot. I think it was one of my favorites. Um, I'm kind of like in between this one and NDA. That's where my headspace is currently at, but I feel like I like this one more. But again, I unfortunately did not get a chance to smell it again because the tester was missing. So next up, I do want to talk about Hard to Get. Now, Hard to Get is a fragrance that has citrus zest, sheer jasmine, and whipped vanilla. So this is a perfume to me that's kind of similar to um, Lemon Tart by Theodore's Calatinus. So you know how much I love Lemon Tart if you're a regular on this channel. I adore Lemon Tart. It's a really 
photorealistic gourmand fragrance with like that lemon zest, lemon custard, whipped cream, uh, shortbread crust, but it's a very buttery fragrance. Like it's almost like it's almost heavy. This one is like again, they're not they're not the same fragrances, all right? They're different, but I, I, I like comparing fragrances to one another so you can kind of get an idea as to what certain perfumes smell like. This one goes for that same baked citrus tart dessert kind of concept, but it makes it a lot lighter. So if you think that, for example, if you tried Theodore's Calatinus Lemon Tart and you think, okay, this is way too buttery, I can't do it. It's like way too heavy and kind of cloying to you. I mean, I love it, but some people think it's cloying. Um, and you want something lighter. This is like your beautiful, perfect baked citrus kind of scent. I can easily see a lot of people loving this for the summertime because it's so light and bright. I think the sheer jasmine floral note really helps this fragrance out because it just makes it more approachable. Um, this is a fragrance that I personally would not buy because I already have like a fragrance that to me kind of serves the same purpose of like that baked citrus. But if you're interested in a baked citrus kind of perfume, this is absolutely one to try. I can see this being like a beautiful fragrance for the summertime. Okay, so that's it for this video. Video. Those are all the fragrances I wanted to talk about. A lot of different polarizing opinions, I feel like, because some of these fragrances people are like absolutely obsessed with, and I was like, mm, I don't know if I like it too much. And it just goes to show that fragrance is so like subjective, right? Um, but thank you for what voting on this if you did vote for me to film this video. Thank you for participating. And like I said earlier in this video, if you're interested in uh, sharing your thoughts or your opinions or potentially participating in the creation of new videos, uh, definitely subscribe because I am trying to post polls about what you want to see, uh, about what videos you want to see first, about, to get your thoughts and opinions on my content uh, because I'm creating these videos for you so that you enjoy them. But uh, thank you for watching till the end. I hope this video was entertaining for you, and I will see you next time. Bye.